here and she uh, just sent me a message that I should tell you that she would have been so happy to be here but unfortunately she, she's not here so I'm here to press the play button let's see where is she here mm. like this hello everyone my name is Katarina Vori. I'm a PhD student from the University of Oulu in northern Finland. My dissertation focuses on a 17th century clinker built wreck and on how to bring meaningfulness and public engagement to the afterlife, the extended biography of the wreck. Let's have a brief moment of relaxation. Now I ask you all to close your eyes for a while. Take a few deep breaths, relax and listen. Archaeological surveillance on sunny and cloudy days. The wreck was exposed, excavated with the help of an excavator, cleaned with shovels and shovels and running water, always covered up for the night. Documented verbally by photographing and measuring, always covered up for the night. No name, no cargo, no mast, no sails, no naked luscious powerful figurehead. No oak was wasted on you, no oak was needed. Nobody could have built you alone, nobody on board. No traces of your owner or your sphere of travels. You were not recycled, not burnt, not reborn in slog house. You did not perish in the deep blue. No anchor, no deck, no ropes to hold you still. No name, no name. No compass guiding me to the right direction. You can now open your eyes. My background is in storytelling. I am a writer, poetry therapist and creative writing teacher. In 2019 I was hoping to finish my archaeology studies to write my master's thesis. I contacted marine archaeologist Minna Koivikko and asked is there anything maritime related heritage in the north that I could play with. A week later she called and said that a wreck had been discovered large and old wreck. The wreck was discovered from the backyard of a downtown hotel in Oulu. I remember the first time I saw the wreck. It looked huge, heavy and kind of humble. It looked as if it was asleep. I thought that any minute it would move a little bit, shiver, stretch and yawn. The second thing I sensed was the smell a heavy, rich and smoky scent of tar, pitch and old ancient sea. It was awesome. When working in the excavation cleaning up the wreck, I was telling stories in my mind, fictional stories of the wreck, of the people who had gone to the forest in cold winter days when there's barely any light. I imagined what they ate, what they wore, I gave them children and pet dogs. All the time I was telling tales about the days gone past. The wreck is called Wreck of Hartipera, where there is now a hotel, a parking lot and biking lanes. There used to be the main harbour of Oulu, the Hartipera harbour, a bustling international harbour. Tar, fish and wood was exported, salt and luxury goods imported. On the right side there is a map from early 17th century, circled the harbour. 
The wreck is an anonymous, mute and paperless from the past. Through dendrochronology, we know that she was built sometime after 1684 of pine that grew in northern Finland. In that era, Finland was part of the kingdom of Sweden. The vessel is clinker built, a lodja or barge type vessel built to carry goods. It might be a peasant yacht. Since it is anonymous, paperless wreck, it is difficult to track its biography. For this reason, I started to explore ways to enrich the afterlife the extended biography of this beauty. In my research I used creative ways and methods to approach the wreck. At the beginning of my presentation, I read you two poems. The first one is an extract of the excavation report, from which I picked up sentences. Through studies we know that poems are an excellent way to deliver information to general public, and this method is used occasionally in social studies, where research output can be, for example, in the form of a haiku, a traditional Japanese poem. At the beginning of my presentation, the second poem, the no-no poem, was inspired by a phrase in Jody Choi's article. He mentions that in tracking the life trajectories of an object, we can list what it is not, what did not happen. This method is also used in human biographies and fictional writing. In this poem, I describe what the wreck of Hartipera is not compared to other wrecks. The second poem, the no-no poem, A large, well-survived piece consisting of four ribs is being pres preserved and it will be in display in the local Northern Ostrobothnian Museum by 2026. In addition, there is over a hundred pieces which are left or natural, not preserved. Instead of locking them up in a storage room and waiting for them to rot, I want people to have a chance to see them, to interact to create personal memories with these pieces. Through creative workshops, I believe we can bring meaningfulness to the extended biography of this object, add ethical appreciation to both the afterlife of the object and the general public's right to participate in the cultural management discourse, to create a common area arena for the consumers of archaeology both the experts and non-experts, to share their views of the wreck and its values in a way that is free from expert jargon, which often excludes the general public. I want to involve the public to the discussion of what should and could be the afterlife of this magnificent wreck. Last summer I organized five from REC to poetry workshops for experts working in maritime heritage management. First there was a slideshow of the excavation and research process of the REC and the participants also had a chance to see authentic pieces of the REC. In the poetry exercise the participants wrote verbs, adjectives 
and nouns related to the wreck. Many ICOVA participants were very hesitant in attending the poetry workshop. But those who did, they were quite surprised how easy the exercise was. The poems created a very good conversa conversation, for example, on the soft values people try to avoid in the field. I hope I can organize a mixed workshop for experts and public to open up the discourse regarding cultural heritage and its values. Thank you very much. I hope you have a fantastic Last summer I organized five Last summer I organized five